Today we're going to take a look at heat sink number eight. I was so stoked and excited about what happened with the last heat sink that this one really blows me away. So the one we're going to look at today, this is the Enio Aluminum M.2 2280 heat sink with a 20 millimeter fan and a pure copper strip. And this is for an M.2 NVMe SSD. Starting from the bottom, we have four major components. The tray, a thermal copper strip, an aluminum fin, and a turbo fan. And in that sandwich, we have two thermal pads with the M.2 NVMe in the middle. So we're going to cover all the bases as we've done to keep this apples and apples with the last heat sinks. Unboxing, examination, installation, and test. And this M.2 NVMe cooler by Enio is going to go on this particular card. This is the Supermicro Dual M.2 NVMe adapter. And the primary drive we're going to be testing is the WD Black SN50. The secondary drive on this card is the Samsung 980 Pro. Both of those are PCI Express 4.0 second generation. So once we get to the point where we do the test, we'll look at our two numbers and see how this balances out. Now, because this has a fan on it, you know, there's some mixed issues with that. My concern is because we learned a long time ago, smaller fans make more noise. And for those on the test system that we need to cover, which I'll get into, those that have a concern about the MOSFET, that particular fan has, well, has driven a few people kind of like, uh, they couldn't stand the noise. So I'm concerned about this because we're not looking at one, we're looking at possibly two, but possibly four. And because we could be looking at two or four, and each fan has to have a fan header to the motherboard, uh, that creates another video where we would talk about how to deal with that, how to distribute that. So I'll say that for a separate, but that too is a concern. So we need to test this two ways. One with the fan plugged in, and number two with the fan not plugged in. See what kind of results we get. And based on the numbers, as impressed as we were with the Sabre heat sink, that was 54 degrees. Now all this information I'm going to share with you, I'll reiterate some of that as we're doing the test, but I just want you to know right now, I was really stoked by that last one. The Siddeley got us to 48 degrees, 48. That blew me away. And the Sabrent, which had three heat pipes, whereas the Acidly, which had actually looked like two, but it was actually four. Uh, what I want to see is something that comes in between that. So let's see how well this does. So looking at the information that they have on Amazon, we've got a copper tube. And the copper tube is going to sit down, and that's going to absorb, we hope, the heat and transfer that to the aluminum and out. The description. We have a 20 by 20 fan, 10,000 RPM, high performance fan. Low noise, no vibration, with an 8 to 25 degree centigrade cooling effect. And I've already stated where we've been with the others. It varies depending on the environments. Suitable for game players. Well, should be suitable for high performance drives because we're looking at 7,000 megabytes on a second generation PCI Express 4.0 drive. Drive meaning an M.2 NVMe card. Compatible with PCI Express NVMe M.2 SSD. And again, this is 2280 in the size. Heat conductive material, one 0.5 millimeter, one 1 millimeter, and eight 0.8 millimeter small square. And I didn't show you when we took that off the uh, acidly. That was kind of messy getting that off, but that had such compression, it came out easy. But uh, you could see by the compression how that got down into the nook and crannies. It was really impressive. So I'm, I'm not a big fan of the sliced pads, but it is what it is. We're testing with stock. We want to establish a baseline. Once we have the baseline, then we're going to see who's the best performer. Then the next step will be another video about changing out the thermal pads. Unique nano silicone thermal pad. Again, no rating for the W over MK. However, if you look here a little bit further down, we do get a rating for the actual thermal conductivity of the heat sink. I would hope that includes the thermal pads, which is 560 W over MK. And I'll get into the definition of all that when we do the video on the summation because uh, We've been asked to take a look at another heat sink, but we have to remember our primary directive was looking at this Supermicro card. And that's a dual M.2 NVMe adapter. The other option is a quad card. And of course, the third option would be on a motherboard. Now, this other one we've been asked to look at, same brand, different model, but it's really, really tall. And my concern is there's no way it's going to do what we want for a dual M.2 adapter or for a quad card. That's out of the question to be strictly on a motherboard, but it's only on a motherboard where you've got room where there's nothing over that. And most all the motherboards I've seen, there's always something sitting on top of the M.2 NVMe drive. So uh, I would love to look at it, but I want to stay focused on what we're after. Now, the heat sink design, groove design, greatly increased the heat dissipation. Absolutely. Aluminum alloy material, silver plating, anodic oxidation. How about we just call that anodized aluminum? Anyway, 
gives the dimensions, gives the weight, and of course the thermal conductivity of this heat sink. And the methodology, the aluminum heat sink fin, increase the contact area between the fins and the air and improve the heat dissipation. Well, no matter what they say, it's all about results. And even though we've had preconceived ideas on some of these uh, heat sinks, I gotta tell you, this has been absolutely fascinating. And the more I learn, the more I wanna know. So I'm really eager to see how this is gonna perform both with the fan plugged in and with the fan not plugged in. And I'm gonna try to listen to see if I can hear any noticeable noise, I'm sure I will, but I've got lots of fans in this case. The lid is off, so I should be able to hear it even better, but that doesn't mean I will. Again, your test results may vary. Let's get this out and do an examination. I'm always curious about what's in the box. Nice layout on the back of the box where we can see the specs we've just talked about. And this is a C2600-2 cooler heat sink. Okay, and if you'll notice right here where my thumb is on the bottom, we've got one little seal. So we're going to cut that seal. Ice cold. Let's hope so. Remember, they got some tall shoes to fill after the acidity. That blew me away. Oh, ain't this nice. That's a mighty big box for such a little bitty device. And this almost, almost, not does, but almost looks like it could fit on a motherboard underneath devices, but it will not. It's too big. I can tell by looking at it. And something we need to start talking about as we look at these, and most of this I need to save for the summation, but I want to say anything that's using uh, bands of any type, that's temporary. And those kind of heat sinks, even if we've had some good readings, which we did on the first copper heat sink, which was 61 degrees. I have to look at the numbers. I can't remember all that. But that was on the first copper heat sink, and uh, 61 degrees was good. The second copper heat sink was 69, and the third copper heat sink was 69. Remember, the third copper heat sink was just a flat piece of copper. And one of you asked about the dimensions and what that all works out to. I've still got to uh, measure that, see how that works out, because in a laptop, that spacing is crucial. However, for what we're going to be doing, uh, how this is going to fit, and based on weight, not bad. It feels about like the weight of the acidity. Uh, again, I'm concerned about that little fan making noise. But what I want to focus attention on is the, uh, this has a base, we have a mechanical fastener. So what we're looking at is we've gone from passive cooling to active cooling because we have a fan. I want to identify that. And being as such, we need to see how that performs. And we can hold this up on end so we can get a good look at the cross section of that heat sink. Now in the images I've all seen, that little copper tube sticks out. It does not with this. It is the length of this device. And our attachment point is at this point because I can tell where that notch is at. Interesting. I hope the cable's long enough. It looks like it is. Somebody had to spend some time poking that down through a hole in the box through the insert and winding it up. Oh gosh, yeah. That'll go from front to back pretty easy. Fantastic. And so we get a bag with the ingredients. We'll get into that in just a second. We get a Velcro strap and a manual. Nice drawing on the front. Heat sink only fits a desktop PC. No kidding. The manual is only in English. Getting started. Thank you for purchasing NEO C2600-2 M.2 NVMe cooler heat sink with 20 millimeter PWM pulse wave modulation fan, which means that will be a four pin connector. Yes, that's a four pin connector. However, I only see three wires. Huh. We'll see how that goes. The quick install guide provides step-by-step -step installation instructions and other important information regarding your NEO product. For the latest NEO product information and news, please visit the website, neo-usa.com. Great. Package contents. One main heat sink with a fan, a bottom clasp heat sink, thermal pad two, screwdriver, fixing screw two, fixed column, guarantee card, and a user manual. And I got to tell you, you're going to have better luck reading what I've got up here on screen than looking at the manual. That's how tiny this is. Features. The add-on RGB heat sink fan combo. There is no RGB heat sink fan on there. There may be a model that does, but this one does not. Curious. Anyway, for bare M.2 2280 M.2 NVMe drives, consists of a PCB fan, aluminum heat sink, reduces the temperature by at least 25%, gives the size, type, Specs on the fan, and there again it says 4-pin, says SATA power, it's pulse wave modulation, that's a motherboard connector. That's not a straight SATA power tap. They need to fix that. Comprehensive heat dissipation, 10 to 40 degrees. Interesting. Drive installation, remove the main heat sink with the fan, so we got four screws because we have a tray. Install the thermal silicone M.2 SSD card and heat sink and lock four screws. So we're going to have a sandwich of which I will dry assemble because I want to check it for spacing and sizing. 
Step three, insert the M.2 NVMe heatsink with the um, M.2 NVMe drive on it into the M.2 connector. And then step number four, plug in the four pin header into the four pin socket on the motherboard. Yep, got that. Okay, so much for that. What I want to know is the um, thickness of the heat pads based on what it said here in the specs, which is 0 0.5, 1 millimeter, and 0 0.8. Okay, we know the 0 0.8 will be on top. So the question is on the bottom, will it be 0 0.5 or will it be 1 millimeter? That's what we're going to figure out. And let's open our bag of goodies. Yeah, that's definitely a factory seal on that because that tears that up, taking that out. Screwdriver. I'll be eager to see if it's magnetized. Thermal pads. And even though the documentation says three, I see two pads here. Okay, a thick one and a thin one. Nope, those are both the same thickness. To me, just at a glance, those look like half a millimeter. Those don't even look like 0 0.8. And I, and I can't tell by looking at it if it's cut up. Usually you can tell by looking at them. Now these are solid pads. Okay, so to reiterate, screwdriver, two pads, two screws, and the standoff that we talked about in the last one. So three items. But we don't have to worry about the extra parts because we have two screws here and two screws here already mounted. We just have to take it apart. And NEO is on YouTube, aren't we all? And that's their thank you card. Great. Fan not spitting, find out why and how to fix it. If you find the heat sink fan is not active, please check the BIOS setting. Make sure you turn the fan into standard normal mode. Which brings up a good point. Since we're plugging this into the motherboard, we're going to need to go to the BIOS. We're going to look at fan control and look at that from the BIOS and see how we can adjust that to something that's uh, reasonable, then run the test. I'm not going to run it full blast. I'm going to run it as something we can tolerate, but we're going to test it both ways with it plugged in and with it not plugged in. First test, plugged in. And then a warranty card, dear customer. Okay, I'm good with that. So that way you know what you got, all that information. Good to know. Good to go. The extra screws we won't need, so we'll set those aside. And that standoff we won't need because we're using the Super Micro. So let's get this apart. Can't get over these little fans. You know, you'd think the likes of EKW or uh, even uh, Noctua, since they did something with diamonds eight years ago, you'd think the likes of either one of those would uh, come up with a better solution. Ah, that is magnetized. Fantastic. And I will point out while we're at this point, I've got the first one off. We do have elongated holes. The question is, will we be able to put this in with a... Uh, Double-sided memory. I don't know yet. Based on what the last one went, that was strictly single-sided. We'll see. But it's a question we need to ask. Now our orientation needs to be this direction because of the mounting on the card from the left side, we need that notch over here. And as we examine that, there's the bottom. So that little copper tube is supposed to do some good. We'll see. Measurements, the way that's going to line up, looks good. Drop the memory in because I like a dry fit first. So I know my space relations. That looks good, and that looks good. Okay, so we'll go from the left side that way. I cannot tell yet if these thermal pads are of a higher quality or not, but I need to hold that thought until I get this assembled and see how tight it's gonna be. First pad, peel that back, perfect. Get our M.2 drive located, that looks perfect too. One more thermal pad, we should be in business. Perfect, drop this right back in. Now this will tell us about the thickness of the pads, based on the size of those elongated holes, if there's something we can do with a thicker pad. And looking at those screw holes, those are right in the center, so we can accommodate a thicker pad. That's what I want to find out. And I'll treat this the same way. I put a screw on each side, and then I can use that as a pivot point as I put the other two screws on the other end. And yes, I will apply pressure pushing down as I tighten the screws. Now, would this accommodate a double-sided drive? Maybe, with the existing pads. But I want to use thicker pads if I were to test it again. And this would accommodate thicker pads with single-sided memory. But I would not do thicker pads with double-sided memory. That's my point. Now I'm going to apply pressure right in the center, right here on this end. Tighten that screw. Okay, it's one on the other side. Tighten that screw. And I'll come down here, turn this around. Again, applying pressure. I'll tighten that screw. And again, applying pressure, not on top of the fan, but on top of the heat sink. Tighten that screw. Double checking all four. And this cannot be reversed like the acidity can, because this area here has to clear all the way down. So the alignment on that, once we mount it, will be upside down. But we're lined up. And I'll go over the specs of the machine we're in and reiterate the specs of the drives. On the right side, we clear the notch. On the left side, we clear the bushing right down on the memory. Perfect. All we have to do is drop in the pin, and we're secure.
Perfect. It's like they actually got together and figured that out. Nah, that would never happen. Okay, to reiterate, we have the Enio Aluminum M.2 2280 SSD heat sink with a 20 millimeter fan, little rascal. It is secured to the top drive, which is the WD Black SN850 PCI Express 4.0 second generation, and that drive is capable of 7,000 megabytes. The secondary drive that we're not gonna test, but it's on the card, is the Samsung 980 Pro, same specs. And the dual M.2 NVMe adapter is the Super Micro. I don't think the thermal pads that came with this package are of the same quality that everybody that I can think of has included. It may be because of the thickness, but they just, they don't seem to be of the same quality. I could be wrong. We'll see what kind of results we get, because uh, I may be jumping the gun on my perception. We'll see. Okay, now the specs on the machine we're going to be testing with. This is the Gigabyte TRX40 Designator. We have two 16-lane slots and two 8-lane slots. And we're going to be installing the Super Micro card in that slot, which is the first 8-lane slot. So it's bifurcated. So we're going to have two drives, four lanes for each drive, already bifurcated in the BIOS. In the secondary 8-lane slot, we're only using four lanes because that is a Gigabyte Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3 add-in card. And the other four lanes, we lose. There's nothing we can do with it. And this is what we call dedicated resources. On some other boards that have shared resources, you can reallocate PCI Express resources, but it's either this or that. With this being dedicated, we can allocate lanes in a slot, but we cannot reallocate those lanes in that slot to anything else. And due to the case design, because we're in the first eight lane slot, in the first 16 lane slot, we have a Gigabyte Aorus M.2 quad card. And in the second 16 lane slot, we have an EGA RTX 2080 Ti it is two slots wide. Two slots wide, meaning if we look at the connectors on the case, it occupies two spaces. One, see the little red dot where I'm looking at right down here? One and two. And why that's significant for this card, because this sits in the middle with a space on either side. And this space on the right side gives us flow behind the video card. And the video card has a back plane on it that's about an eighth of an inch thick to stiffen the video card. Hard to see with the lighting, but if you'll see that little kind of a yellow green line through there, that's the PCB. But right up next to it, right there, is the back plane. And that's important because when we use the acetylene, we were right up next to that, about four sheets of paper away from it. Okay, let's do the install. You know, I got to say, weight wise, I can see two of these on a card, I could probably see four. But I'm concerned about the noise from the fan. So that's what we're going to find out. Let's see. Now, personally, I would have preferred this cabling that goes to the back. I would have preferred the cabling come out the other end so we could get a little bit more length on these headers. Now, they are long enough, but that's just my, uh, my two cents worth. Not everybody's going to use these on a dual M.2 adapter or a quad card. A lot of people will be looking to put these on a motherboard. But as we look down through here, the thickness of this, I've got that much space again between this and the video card. So plenty of room for that fan to circulate, but if we go to two fans to four fans, we'll see how that's going to play out. Up here in the top right, we originally tried to go with system fan 6B, which is this connector, but instead that's not red in the BIOS, which is kind of nuts. So we had to swap out. We're going to use system fan 6A. If we were to go to the ones on the bottom because of the nature of the space, you don't realize how much all this stuff down here takes up. To get to these two would be the next two, but it's easier to use the one up here at the top. So that's the one we're going to use. So now that that is secure and we are draped over the quad card, I can do neater about that later. This is not about neat. This is just about testing. So we're plugged in, turned on. Let's energize. Power up. Okay, now we're in the BIOS. Let's go through that. Advanced mode, F2. We'll go to easy mode. Top left, TRX40 Designator, BIOS version F4Q. And the fan we're looking at would be this fan in the top right. We tried the second fan, which is actually on the left, system fan 6B, but we had to swap out for 6A because there is no reading for 6B, which is kind of nuts. So of the list of fans we're looking at, the last fan of the list, which is system fan 6A pump, that one is running at 7,000 RPM. And the fan is capable of 10,000 RPM, how much noise does it make? It doesn't bother me. I, I have other noise here that uh, the power supply, the Superflower power supply probably makes more noise. The fans on the uh, CPU are uh, not objectionable. The case fans, we're using the industrial Noctua fans, not objectionable. 
and I have, uh, which I should save for later, but I have equal pressure on the case, even though the lid is off, for front and rear to uh, keep that pressure consistent and constant. Uh, but what we're focusing on, apples and apples, the lid is off to see what kind of flow we get, see what kind of temperature we're running. And what I'm curious is uh, we'll go into the, now that we've done this in the BIOS, let me show you some more. To adjust these fan curves without having to installing extemporaneous software, I'll use Smart Fan 5, so I'll press F6. This is a function of the BIOS, and I can adjust the curves on these fans. So if I escape, we're looking at, again, System Fan 6A Pump, F6, System Fan 6A Pump, and the curve is right now set System Fan 6A Pump Speed Control Normal. Fan Control use temperature input from the CPU, temperature interval 3, and System Fan Pump Control Mode Auto Stop is disabled. Based on what I've got, I'm okay with it. What I don't get to see, and I won't know until we uh, get to that point, we're running at uh, 43 degrees, and the fan speed is about 7,500 RPM. And if I change it from normal to silent, I go down to 5,600 RPM. So if I leave it at normal, I should plug in about 7,500 RPM. 7,500 RPM at 43 degrees which makes this a little different, but, but remember we've gone from passive to active cooling. So now we need to go into Windows, get our information up with hardware info, sensors, and then we'll look at the uh, speed, verify. You know, I always say, change one thing changes everything. I gotta tell you now that Windows is booting up, I can definitely hear the whir of that fan. I didn't hear it while it was running, so it must be revving up. Well, as we run the test, if I hear it, I'll say something. But it's, a, it's like a, uh, it's like wind whistling through a door that's not properly weather sealed, if you've ever heard that. Kind of like that, kind of a haunting sound. I'll just say that's a lot noisier than the MOSFET. We'll see. Windows flag E, this PC, identify the drives, WD Black SN850 D drive, Samsung 980 Pro, F drive. Hardware info, sensor data only. We're looking for the Seagate Firecuda, which is the C drive, is at 44 degrees. So we're going to be watching current, minimum, maximum, and average. And this is the drive we're going to be looking at. That's the WD Black SN850. I'll move that up a little bit. Right below that, two thermistors on the Samsung 980 Pro, 44 degrees and 53 degrees. And we're going to focus on that thermistor. We want to see how hot that gets. Using Crystal Disk Mark D drive, which is the Samsung 980 Pro. That's a one terabyte drive, so we're using a one gigabyte test file. All. And what we want to focus on are these temperatures. Current, minimum, max, and average. Running this test, the first test where we see the read, we established two facts. One, we know this is PCI Express 4, second generation, so we're getting 7,000 megabytes. And number two, we know the Supermicro is spec at PCI Express 3.0. However, we're achieving the speed of the drive at 7,000 megabytes. The heat that we're after, that we're going to be watching on the left side, on the right, when we get to the second number on the right, that's when we achieve maximum heat. And this started up from a cold boot, and our cold boot was 45 degrees. And our best number was from the Acidily at 48 degrees. Our number that we uh, achieved from the Sabrent, which is the three heat pipes, that was 54 degrees. So, and our first copper heat sink was at 61. I would like to see something between 54 and 61 degrees for what it is. We'll see. But I don't expect anything near what the Acidily did. 58 degrees. And I expect that second number on the rights per megabyte will jump the temperature. Could be 4 to 6 degrees. We'll see. Speculation. Point of conjecture until we have the facts. 59 degrees. Even though the fan whirred up as the system booted up, getting into windows, the fan settled back down. And as it runs right now, doing, even as doing this test, I don't hear noise. We topped out at 60 degrees. I'm impressed. We need to wait till it stops. 61 degrees. And the test is complete. If you'll notice the current minimum maximum and average, we started at 45 degrees. We got up to 61 degrees. We got our 7,000 megabytes on the read, and when we hit our second number on the right, the megabyte, a little over 5,000, that's where we hit our hot point at 61 degrees. That means that's a very effective cooler because when we did the first copper heat sink, that was 61 degrees. We've just achieved 61 degrees. I didn't expect that. I figured maybe 65 degrees. That's, uh, that's wild. Well, the more we do this, the more fascinating it becomes because now what I need to do, since we're dealing with an issue with fans, is we need to do a video about how we're going to handle all those connections 
for all those fans. I've, I've got a list of stuff that I want to share with you guys, but it has to be a separate video. I did not expect this to do that well. So um, now we need to test it with the fan unplugged. We have to. 61 degrees with the fan plugged in. Let's see what happens with the fan unplugged. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Wow, 61. And this time, that fan header is unplugged. What do you think? What are the odds? So we've hit 61 degrees with the fan on there. We looked at it in the BIOS and we set it where it was, I'll say, acceptable. So now that the fan's unplugged, and the only place we really heard the noise was as we were going into windows, it, it revved up, like, like I said, like wind whistling through an old door. Let's see what happens now without the fan plugged in. That's a more effective design than I expected. Call this part two. This time we don't have to identify the drive. We'll go straight to the test. Hardware info. Sensors only. The Seagate Fire Cuda. The Samsung 980 Pro. Right there. And the WD Black SN850. Okay, this time our current minimum, maximum, and average, we're starting at 50 degrees. Straight across the board. Let's bring up Crystal Disk Mark. We know we are on D drive and we know we're set for a one gig test file. Let's test. First, we'll establish our 7,000 megabytes. Let's highlight on this side and watch our temperature. See what our max goes up to. Now that says the minimum was at 50 degrees. Test results without the fan. Okay, we've achieved on the read 7,000 megabytes, so we've established that spec. And on the second right, where we actually get our majority of our heat, looking at the current minimum, maximum, and average, we've achieved 67 degrees. So we can compare that 61 degrees with the fan to 67 degrees without the fan. You know, the more we do this, the more results we get, the more fascinated I am and the more amazed I am. I did not expect to get that good a result. So now that we know what we do, I think the next step is to uh, figure out how to deal with those fans in a video. Uh, then after that, then we'll do the summation, see what it is we know and line up all those temperatures and we can put them up on a chart because there's some details we need to go through with each one of these. But uh, we've also still got two thermal pads that we're going to check on the top too. So my name's Gil Boyd. This is Builder Buy. I want to thank you guys for watching. We're on the next video. We're out.